we're getting like a general just like excitement for the next four years uh, ahead of them. So uh, there's a few ways to connect with us and we gave this to them <coughs> today. Um, so the first thing is Google Classroom. You can feel free to join it as well. We're gonna put out, push out all of our information through Google Classroom. Yep, so I see somebody taking pictures of it, lovely. Uh, so we're gonna post important dates, we're gonna post um, just events coming up, things to look out for, fundraising, like all the things that's going to get, like, bring the class together. Uh, yeah, we also have Remind. If you have not used or heard of Remind before, Remind is a text messaging service for schools. Um, a lot of your students, teachers, coaches, and advisors will all have different Reminds. Um, it's a way for the students to get messages from us. We can send out like blanket text messages to large groups of students, um, and they can respond to us as well. Uh, the phone numbers are hidden on both sides. It goes through a third-party system, so everything's recorded, monitored, and it's a safe way for us to communicate with them. There is a correction. I thought I fixed it, but uh, our remind code should actually end in a six. It should be at TC class 26. So if you're taking pictures of it, uh, it should say 26. Um, so you just text that with the at symbol to the number 81010, and that's gonna get you on the remind. So when we send out a reminder that Fall Fest is September 24th, you'll all get that along with your students. Um, and then we also have an Instagram. There's nothing on it yet, but you can start following it if you like. Um, once we get our class committee together, our executive committee together, we'll post um, updates and pictures and like fun stuff along the way. Um, and that's kind of what we're here for. So. As class advisors, we're here to advise your kids, help them have a good experience. We're kind of the fun part of it. Um, so there's a lot of rules, policies, everything on that end. But we're here for the fun part. We want to have class night outs. Um, we're, when we get around to like senior trip time and all of that, we're working with them on spirit week and homecoming. So it's about fostering that sense of being part of the Timber Creek community. Um, it's great if they're joining activities and sports. We have something like 60 activities and sports that they can join. We're going to encourage that. Not everyone is necessarily going to join them, but regardless, they're part of this class. So we want this class to feel like a family. You might not like everyone in your family, but you're all in it together. And that's what we want them to know. So you'll notice that every student at Timber Creek is gifted with a Chromebook. Um, those Chromebooks are theirs for the course of their schooling. They will also be given a charger. The only thing that they don't have is a bag. So just make sure that when they have it at home that they are careful with the device. Chromebooks are currently available to retrieve if you have not done so already in the main office between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. They will need a Chromebook to start the school year. They also will need for all of the required forms completed in advance by you in order to give the Chromebook to them. So please make sure that you do that. There is a $20 technology fee every year to continue with the device. All right, so there are a plethora of rules and expectations and protocols that we have in our student handbook and we ask for all of our students to be mindful and conscious of those, they all have to sign to say that they've received and read them. However, I have a McKenzie's Fab Four, just to kind of narrow down what's important. I tend to believe that our students need to practice student professionalism, and you will hear that from me very often. I am equipping them not to um, try and, you know, frivolously provide punitive consequences for things, for rules, but I actually want them to understand that it is important to follow expectations and protocols, whether they are at work, in a profession, or whether they are at school, which is their profession currently. So there are four things that I do stress to students often. You will see these things noted in my newsletters. 
I am big on communication and I try to make my expectations clear, but I also try to provide you with the information that you need as a parent to figure out how to do school with Timber Creek or at Timber Creek. The first um, McKenzie Fab Four is our student identification. Today, all students took pictures for their student ID. You'll notice that mine is displayed on this cool little lanyard. They have all been gifted with a lanyard as well. They will need to make sure that this is with them at all times and it is a part of their outfit. So students need to make sure that their lanyard is displayed on them throughout the entire school day. Students receive a new ID each year with a cute little photo and any additional IDs will incur a $5 charge if they do not have them at school. The second piece of information is our substance abuse and suspicion policy. This is statewide and it is also something that we encourage and that we are bolstering across the district. Vaping and smoking are not permitted on school grounds and while this does seem like an elementary protocol and something that folks should assume, we want to make sure that every staff member, student, and parent and caregiver are aware of what happens when students are suspected of being under the influence. Whenever a staff member has reason to believe that a student may be under the influence, the adult must communicate that incident to administration. Those educational personnel immediately notify the student's caregiver to obtain an examination of the student by a physician and to immediately undergo a urine drug screen analysis. The student may not return to campus without physical clearance from a physician. Safety is paramount, so we cannot determine at the school level whether a student is under the influence or not. We want to ensure that they are in a spa safe space before they return to campus. Our third rule of thumb is our dress code. Um, students must display appropriate dress throughout the entire day. Students are not permitted to wear wave caps, bonnets, hats, hoods, and scarves, and sunglasses and sleepwear may not be worn. I do know that some of these dress code regulations have changed from middle school and even throughout elementary school, but I just want to give you the highlights here at Timber Creek. Clothing that exposes the belly, back, chest, or shoulders is deemed inappropriate. Examples of this would include crop tops, tube tops, halter tops, and sheer tops. This year, all of our administrative offices are going to be equipped with a change of clothes if in the event a student is being asked to change. If the student violates dress code, they will be asked to select different clothing. Now, I tried to go on Amazon and find some cute little options, but at the end of the day, this is what we got. So my encouragement to you is to make sure that you are working with your child, analyzing what they look like, because some stuff that comes in here is really crazy. Um, so please make sure that if we're calling home to get more appropriate clothing, if you have an opportunity to come up and bring something for your child, that's great. If not, we do have options for them here. Students who are non-compliant with this policy will receive immediate disciplinary action. We will provide a courtesy and work with children as they learn the process. Um, we are not going to hit them hard from the very inception um, of the school year. However, in time, we are hopeful that this becomes a practice. And the last uh, protocol that I'd like to stress is to be on time. Students are considered late if they are not in their first bell class at 720 or in their other classes at the start of the bell. Students who are late to school four times will be charged with one full day's absence. That is important to understand. Students who exceed 12 plus absences throughout the year will be assigned a credit completion course which is usually assigned at the very beginning of the summer months. If exceeding 24 plus absences, you are ineligible for credit completion. Truancy charges are specific to most of our ninth and 10th grade students due to age. Truancy char charges can be filed for any student with 10 plus cumulative unexcused absences. What this means in real time is that if your child has a doctor's appointment or if they have to go somewhere um, a college visit, et cetera, please make sure that you get us those notifications so that we can excuse the absence at our level. You can provide that documentation to Mr. DeMalo's office and his secretary, Mrs. Nancy Lynch, will be helpful to that end. All right, manners matter. I encourage all of our students to be polite human beings. Um, I am very, very thoughtful about trying to not only help students academically, but I ask our staff to work to make sure that they are productive people.
people um, and folks that you just want to hang out and chill around. So students who have issues with other students should refrain from confronting the student, especially during charger time. So we understand that students have been at home and have lost some concept of how to socialize with each other, but we are here to help. We have a counseling department that includes a student mentor and a student success coach and a mental health um, counselor, and we also have a student assistance counselor, but our administrators also, day in and day out, are used to dealing with student issues, and we are here to help. We do not judge, we're here to help again. Instead, the student should report, instead of going and approaching a student themselves, the expectation is to go to an administrator, a counselor, or another adult in the building. And if you have ears on a situation that is occurring and you'd like to phone those, those challenges in, we'd more than likely, we're more than helpful to try to make sure that we facilitate a peer-to-peer -peer conversation to resolve that issue as soon as possible. Students who violate this are subject to a minimum of three days in the RISE program or two days out of school suspension. So what we are encouraging our students to do is to just make sure that they are contacting an adult and finding a reasonable and a meaningful way to resolve a conflict before managing it on their own. I absolutely love old school hip hop and all things old school R&B. So, um, Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock made this cool song, It Takes Two to Make a Thing Go Right. So we live by that here. Billy, I know you digging this. So we live by this here, and partnership is everything. Um, and what that really just shows is that we try to make sure that the students who are having an issue with each other really have an opportunity to resolve and restore that relationship together with a qualified adult. Conflict resolution is our groove. Um, and we have workshops and we are prepared to meet students where they are. We do have a RISE program that is specific to Black Horse Pike Regional School District and it is what we parents probably thought of as an in-school suspension setting. We like to make sure that we have an opportunity to restore behaviors in school while we are still educating the child as opposed to sending them home and making them serve the consequence there. The program intends to increase attendance and decrease suspensions, and the assignments include three, five, or 10 days. Students may not return to their regular schedule until all assigned days have been completed. Caring correction strategies at the creek. So we have a couple of different ways that we try to intervene to help students strengthen their own behavior and or make better choices academically and socially. Principal's probation is one of those ways. Students are placed on principal's probation if they receive 100 disciplinary points or one significant infraction. They could also be placed on principal's probation when placed on an academic improvement plan. So we ask students every year to come in here with a great mindset, ready to start anew, so we are hopeful that they continue on that track throughout the year. However, we have developed a principal's probationary period to give them some time to take their choices seriously and to think more thoughtfully about what they're doing. While on principal's probation, students cannot participate in athletics or activities. We encourage a strong alignment between athletics, ac academics, and activity involvement. Students lose 30 points every 30 calendar days, so we don't want students to dig a hole for themselves, so much so that they can't get out alone. We offer them the opportunity, if at 30 days they have exhibited good behavior, to lose 30 of those points, and we have seen a great amount of success with that program. Teamwork makes the dream work. I say this all the time, and your partnership matters. I encourage my staff, my faculty, um, in any capacity to make sure that we are partnering and communicating with parents, caregivers, and families at all times. What you can do to help us includes checking the parent portal. You will be amazed at the looks on your children's faces when they see that you see what they can see. So it is important to make sure that you check the parent portal when you have an opportunity, get your login information. I have it right on my phone, so I know at all times, my kids know at all times, that I can go on there and check their grades. If Macy's missing a test, I already know it's there. Examine dress attire if you have an opportunity before they leave the house. We do know that some students are sneaky and they come in dressed in ways that you don't realize, but when you have an opportunity when you're taking them school shopping, please make sure to be thoughtful about the dress code. 
Do not drop off fast food. While we do understand that students have a need to eat lunch, we want them to be able to do that. We encourage bag lunches, not lunches from Wawa, Chick-fil-A, or McDonald's. Those sorts of things are distractions to our cafeteria space, so we're asking for you not to drop those off. We also ask our students to not Uber or DoorDash food to our school as well. It's crazy, I know, but it, it's real. Please make sure at any cost that you are talking to your child. Our vice principals and our counselors really have done an amazing job both through COVID and post COVID to make sure that any challenges your child is experiencing during the day, we communicate them to you at home. And we are also giving you an opportunity to partner with us to make sure that the students needs are met during the school day. So please make sure when you have an opportunity after you speak to an administrator or a counselor that you are also mirroring a conversation similarly at home. Communicate with the staff. We are here through email. You can call us. You will meet the staff um, you know, in person during back to school night. I have a virtual slideshow that has been pulling on their bitmojis throughout the hallway. But please make sure at any time if something doesn't feel right to you that you contact us. That is what we're here for. And please drop your student off to school on time. There are many times that our students are here they're perplexed with being late, but it's because a parent or a caregiver did not have an opportunity to drop them off on time regularly. So please make sure that you are trying to do that as much as possible. All right, giveaway number two. Think thoughtfully about this one. I got a prize for you. So what year was the first graduating class at Timber Creek? Yep, in the red. girl it's a trick question think about this one yep right here not 2005 <laughs> all right over here no you're close though right here oh no girl all right right here in the white shirt and the glasses no y'all are missing the mark all right right there nope somebody already said 2001 in the back pink shirt 2003 for the win. All right, can you do me a favor? Don't be confused. There was no senior class the first year that we were here at Timber Creek. Girl, this is what the prize is for. Don't argue with me, Ashley. Give out the gift, girl. All right, all the way in the back. All the way in the back. All right, anyway, she's coming down. She's coming down. Like the price is right. Girl, come on down. Run down and get your gift. That's what I like. Oh, there you go. Give it up for her. She was a part of the first graduating class at Timber Creek. That is amazing. I went to Disney World last week and I found a graduate of Timber Creek because I had Timber Creek mouse ears on who had Rob DeMalo as a vice principal. It is a small world all the time, literally, no pun intended. All right, before the school day, just a few um, reminders. Students who ride a bus will receive their bus pass and transportation information in a separate mailing from the GT Transportation Department. So please make sure that you go through your mail. It's not junk, but it will not come from Timber Creek. It will come specifically from GT Transportation. All GT schools have a half day on day one. So in my experience, although they might tell you differently, be advised the buses may be late dropping students off at home on day one. Typically when all schools have a half day at the same time, it is very difficult for them to juggle all elementary, middle, and high school levels. So just know if your child does not come home at their regular scheduled time, this is why it's because we have half days across the district. Now, if buses are ever late in an, in an intense way, I will send you an email and I will communicate it via an all call notification just to make you aware that the buses will be late. Please make sure to check your calendars also. As a parent, it's important for me to understand, so I'm gifting this to you. Gloucester Township Public School District's days off from school differ from our days off at school. Doesn't make sense to me. If I was in charge, I'd change it, but I'm not. So here's the deal. Please make sure that you have all of your calendars on the fridge because the days will differ based on where they go to school, whether it's elementary and middle versus high school. Buses in the morning drop off at the E-Wing entrance near the auditorium. Car riders should be picked up and dropped off by the gym. That is just to make sure that students can expeditiously enter the school building. When students are late, they will use the main entrance and they must have their ID to scan in. 
This is an update for this year. The state did not redo, re renew um, our contract to have free lunches across the, across the state of New Jersey. So students will be paying for lunch this year. It is important for you to know if in the event you qualify for free or reduced lunch, the applications are located on the website. The cost of breakfast is $2.50 and the cost of lunch is $3.75. So we had very little parents fill out the applications for free or reduced lunch in years past because school lunch was free for all students. It is different this year. So please make sure if you are eligible for that program that you would fill out that paperwork prior to the school year beginning so that there is no lapse in payment. All students will be assigned to an enrichment period. Mrs. Hengel is going to review our lunch and learn process in a couple of minutes. Our grade nine eats first in the cafeteria. Our grade 10 eats first half in the LMC or the aux gym. Our grade 11 students eat the second half in the cafeteria or the LMC. And our grade 12 students eat the second half in the cafeteria or the LMC. So you'll notice that it's a little prescriptive on the beginning end as ninth and 10th graders. And then as 11th and 12th graders, you have the freedom to choose which space you'd like to eat in. I'm gonna hand the mic over to Dina Tomzak so she can discuss our athletics and our activities program. Thank you. Okay, after the school day, we have sports, we have activities for your students to join. In order to be eligible for this, they need to be academically eligible, so their grades need to be good. Fun fact for the freshmen coming in, they are all eligible for the fall season. When it comes to winter and spring, they have to worry about their grades. So if you have a student who is interested in participating in the fall, they are eligible academically. Um, with that being said, if you have a student who wants to participate for the fall, um, you have to sign them up on parent access. They cannot sign themselves up. You as the parent would have to sign them up. They also need an updated physical. So if they had a physical at Mullen, just know that they expire after one year. So if they got it in August 1st of last year, they would need one for this year to participate. So you have to make sure that you have an updated physical. And we are able to, in the athletic office, check on that as soon as you sign them up on parent access. With that, as freshmen, they also need an impact test, which is for concussion protocol. If you are having trouble with that, please make sure that you are doing it on a computer. You cannot take the impact test on your phone. All of the instructions for everything to sign up for athletics is on the Timber Creek website under the athletics tab, so you can easily find stuff there. Um, it does say on there that we run reports mid and end marking period, so we're changing that this year. So fun fact for all of our athletes, like Billy said, you are students before you are athletes, so every Friday my secretary will be running academic reports for these athletes to make sure that their grades are up to par. If they are not, by week four, they're gonna have a conference with their VP to improve those grades. If they're not improved by week five, they will be sitting. Because again, they are athlete, uh, uh, students before they're athletes. So we wanna make sure that the grades are up to par before they participate in anything else. And that also includes staying after for activities. As far as staying after, we do offer transportation. So if your student has detention or they need tutoring extra help, or they want to stay for an activity, they will have transportation at 4 o'clock to go home. Unfortunately for athletics, someone will need to pick them up because those practices run a lot later than 4 p.m. If you want to look up the different activities that we offer, we have things, to do, things for chargers to do after 2. That's also available on the school's website under the activities tab. You can look up all the different things that we have to offer. Uh, the different advisors have web pages, so you can look at all that. Um, for phys ed, when you walked in, you saw that we had phys ed shirts available. A new thing that we're doing for the phys ed department this year to try and eliminate some costs is you no longer have to buy gym shorts. We are allowing the students, although they're happy, allowing the students to wear something that they bring in themselves. It has to be either black, navy blue, or gray. They can wear shorts or pants, whatever they feel comfortable in. They have to be school appro appropriate, cannot be see-through. Um, they can, you're happy, I know. 
Um, and we just want to make sure that everyone is comfortable. The big thing with that is hygiene. So if a student wears those pants to school or shorts to school, they cannot wear them for phys ed. So in order to receive a full grade and the best grade for phys ed, they have to wear the school issue gym shirt, which they can buy out there. They can buy the first week of school or they can buy any time in their phys ed class because they're available in the locker rooms for $10 and then they have to bring in any shorts that they're comfortable in, okay? All right, before I bring Mrs. Hengel up to close out with our bell schedule and our scheduling options, I'm gonna ask for Brisa Medina and Evan Bishop to come up and share their experience at Timber Creek. Give them some love. Good evening, my name is Brisa Medina and I'm a part of the sophomore class. I'm also the secretary of the student council here at Timber Creek. Um, to start off, I'd like to welcome you all to the school. As an involved student here, I believe that this school offers great opportunities to each and every student. When my freshman year began, I didn't know many people because I had just moved to Sicklerville recently. Like all of the students here at TC, I was offered the option to join extracurriculars and sports, and I joined multiple clubs and multiple sports. I started to learn more about the school and also meet new people, and to feel brave enough to get out of my comfort zone and try new things that challenged me. I ran for a class officer, and I also got a higher role in the student council. Timber Creek has bettered me and made me proud of myself and all of my peers. I know that our school will be an amazing fit for your child. Thank you. All right, as you can see, read obviously. My name is Evan Bishop. I'm a senior here at Timber Creek High School. Um, before I ever went to TC, I never really did the whole clubs and athletics thing. Um, I mostly focused on like the extracurriculars. I was really into music, so I focused on that. However, when I came to TC, I tried to make it a goal to, you know, reach out, try some new things, and I ended up becoming a class officer, um, participating in all of these wonderful events that the school holds, including our homecoming dances. Um, later as a senior and junior, you get to experience the prom and the class trip. Um, and for the athletic side, I've managed to join the cross country team, mostly because it was the sport that required the least hand-eye coordination. <laughs> And it was, it was fun. Um, I, I made a lot of great friends that are, you know, still friends to this day, even those who graduated. Um, for those who have kids who might have never tried clubs or sports, it's a great way to reach out, make new friends, um, and even excel academically. You learn a lot of great things trying to, you know, do time management and, um, Athletics in particular, you, you learn dedication and persistence despite, you know, injuries and what have you. So, yeah, if you have a child who hasn't signed up for athletics, join cross country or a sport. Um, and, yeah, enjoy this year because before you know it, your children will be young men and women. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Michelle Hangle. I'm the Director of School Counseling here at Timber Creek. I may have met you back in February if you were here for our parent night. Basically, what this slide is, is our first day schedule for next Tuesday. We normally run on a rotating schedule, which I'll show you in a second. This slide's just showing you next Tuesday, 
We're going to go all eight periods in a row with shortened periods so that your students get to meet everyone and see all of their classes. I went over this today with each rotation in our uh, student orientation, so they should know this as well. Our normal district bell schedules listed here, it's a little hard to read, but up in the royal blue is A, B, C, D day. It shows you which period meets that day. Two drop off every letter day. And the next day, the rotation changes. So your students came home with a paper schedule today, but I also told them they can go into Parent Access, our student portal. Go, please have them do this before next Tuesday. They can see their bell schedule in this view. It's nice and colorful, and it's easier to read for them. And that prepares them for Wednesday when we go to a letter day rotation. I also told them two tips. One, take a picture of their schedule when they're in the portal. I said, do not walk around the first day with your paper schedule. You will, you will not be popular, right, if you do that? All right, I don't care what they do, just as long as they get to class on time and know where they're going. But if it was my child, I would tell them, take a picture, make it your wallpaper on your phone, and for a couple weeks, you're going to need it, or maybe the whole school year, whatever it takes. Also on here, uh, but I just want to point out our lunch and enrichment times in the middle there, lunch A and lunch B. All of our freshmen will be eating in lunch A, and then they'll go to enrichment for lunch B. So that's also on their schedule. You'll be able to see that. Our enrichment is a time of study hall with a assigned teacher. They can do their work, get extra help from a different teacher, take a test they need to make up, or anything like that. All of our freshmen, except for a very few, have English, science, health and PE9, mathematics, freshman seminar, world history. Some have a world language and one elective. Some have uh, no world language. They're waiting till 10th, which is fine, and uh, two electives in that case. Our grading scale and the weights uh, associated with each letter grade are listed on this slide. I will not read them off to you. But we do differ from Mullen. So if your student comes from Mullen, though we have a different grading scale. It shocks our freshmen a little bit because they're not expecting our grades to differ. Our passing grades are 65 and up. So that also differs from Mullen. Not that I want anyone aiming for 65. The credit requirements, can we go back one? Just po uh, point out over on the right, students have to maintain a certain number of credits to be promoted to the next grade. It's 30 for going on to 10th, 60 for 11th, and 85 to be a senior, and then 125 credits to graduate. All of our full year classes are five credits, so students would have to pass at least six classes this year to go on to 10th grade. Our graduation requirements are almost aligned totally with the state. We do differ on the credits. We require more than the state requires. We have to meet all New Jersey requirements for testing, including NJSLA and anything else they throw at us. Students must earn 125 credits total, and they must complete and pass four years of English, four years of health and PE, three years of math, three years of science, two years of U.S. history and one year of world, one year of a career uh, in technical education elective, one year of a visual performing art, one year of a world language, half a year of financial literacy, which we do junior year, and lastly, um, half a year of career education. And they have to meet our attendance policy as well. Um, just like the athletic office and the class advisors, we have different ways to keep in touch. We do have a remind. We use to send out messages about upcoming counseling events and scheduling and testing information. In addition, we also are on Twitter. And most importantly, up on the right, it mentions our parent access portal. All of you should have received an email in July if you were registered with the district at that point. It would have told you from our district um, how to set up your Parent Access account. So whatever email you have listed or at Mullen, what it rolled over, or if you're new to the district, whatever you gave us, 
Your student also has their own, so I talked to them about that today. If you have any issues with it, you can always call the counseling office or email your child's school counselor and they'll help you get that set up. The counselors aren't all in this week, uh, there are a few, but it's probably better if you reach out to our secretaries, they're right on our website, you can email them or call them directly and they'll help you with that as well. And lastly, the procedures for our office. Students can request to see their school counselors, the mental health counselor, our SAC counselor, and even um, get in touch with our student mentor all through an online request button. And I showed them today where to find that, but if you're on our main Timber Creek webpage or on the counseling tab, there is a red uh, oval button you'll see and it says request an appointment with the school counselor. So the students can be logged in and hit it right from their Chromebook. They can also fill out a paper form. We have them available in our office all the time. And then the counselor sends a pass for them the next morning. If it's an emergency, we don't go through that process. We have the counselor call them out of class as soon as possible. If you need help, this is our alphabetical listing assigned on the left to the counselors. The counselors follow your students all four years. So unless your student changes their last name, they have the same counselor. So you'll see it listed up here. In addition, Mrs. Hull, our SAC counselor, Mrs. Reese, our mental health assistance counselor, and our mentor, Mr. Thompson, are all listed up there for your review. Our child study team, uh, Mr. DeVecus has letters A through H. He is here tonight. I don't know if he's in here. He was out in the hallway. Uh, Mr. McIntyre has I to M, and Ms. Goulburn is N to Z. So if your child has an IEP and works with the case managers, that would be their assignment. Mr. DeVecus is our um, cons learning consultant. Mr. McIntyre is a school psychologist. Ms. Goulburn's a social worker. So all three usually work together for um, student IEPs and meetings. Okay. Last giveaway question, last giveaway. So what was on the grounds at Timber Creek before it was built? All right, over here. It was a tire park. Come on down and get your prize. All right, you gotta give me some, some skills, girl. You gotta run down here and act like you excited to get this t-shirt. There you go. I know, I'll explain to you what a tire park is another time. So there was a tire park here before the building was built. Last year we celebrated our 20th anniversary here at Timber Creek. So there are a lot of fun facts that we have asked our students and our staff to recognize and to acknowledge in commemoration of this great time. Our parent portal is listed here. You will find it in a little, there's a little icon in the corner of both the district and our website, which is where you will get access to grades, attendance, discipline, and your forms. Students today received four different giveaways themselves. They received a lanyard. Every year we create a Timber Creek cool little t-shirt, um, a nod to Run DMC as their gift today. They also received a schedule and a photo ID. Our home and school council is outside of the auditorium selling paraphernalia. It's a great group to get involved with. Just understand you do not need to be in a leadership capacity to work with our home and school council. They really are a fun group of people who are designed to create fun experiences that include families and the greater community. Please make sure if you wanna take a picture of this slide, these are a few save the dates, important things that are coming up that you either need, you know, dresses for homecoming or, you know, like make sure you pick them up at a homecoming game. So all of these um, activities are events that are coming up in the next month of school. Our end of marking period is November the 9th and our report card disbursement is November 17th. We do have report cards that are mailed home, so you are not responsible for checking those online. You will actually get a paper copy mailed to your house. And last but not least, I want to market a few events. We have at Timber Creek the concept and the spirit of family, and I am trying to create a school 
um, that a lot of our community members can hold near and dear. This summer, we had a summer youth program for athletics, and we are hopeful to be able, with the board's approval, to have um, some summer camps um, that are more vo-technical in nature, and also some athletic camps that are week-long for students moving forward into the coming years. But for now, we have a fall festival that's taking place on September 24th. Tomorrow is our annual Charger Friends and Family Day. You have an opportunity to eat dinner here. You also can listen to some good vibes and a great DJ, take a picture with Charlie the Charger, and you can dunk Mr. Damalo for a dollar. I mean, that would bring me out, I'm just saying. You can dunk me too, but I would dunk him instead. So then, last but not least, we have mums on sale. Those mums will be on sale through September the 30th. They're really hearty ones, not like the kind you get at Produce Junction. I think you should buy them. And last but not least, we have building tours that are optional for you. If you like, our campus is your campus. There are maps outside of this auditorium space that you can take your own guided tour. We've made some great updates to the buildings. Our lockers are dope and cute. You should check those out. We got new ones. And then, oh, I know, for real, right? They're lit. So then, also understand that we have students who are available to guide you as a tour. Um, our student athletes, there are four of them available. If you'd like to um, engage in that option, you should meet right outside of the cafeteria, and there are four tour guides that are ready and available to assist you with that. Um, just understand that our building is like a sunshine. It's like a ray of sunshine, both figuratively and literally. There's a big old sun in the middle, which we call our LMC, and there are sun rays, which are our hallways. So it really isn't that confusing. Um, please see me, Mr. Damalo, Michelle Hengel, or Dina Tomzak with questions. We will be up here to address anything that you did not already um, get an opportunity to understand. And last but not least, I'd like to thank all of the people during the summer months who make magic happen here at Timber Creek. And I thank you for coming again. Woohoo! Yeah, I like this energy. See, you going home pumped and charged up. So if you can, if you're interested in a guided tour, please make sure that you see our student athletes. They are right outside of the cafeteria space. PE uniforms are still on sale, and paraphernalia is on sale as well, right outside of the auditorium. And we're still up here for Q&A.